Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the holidays, the dreaded holidays. And what I mean by that is because it seems so common now, instead of enjoying the holidays and looking forward to so many of the blessings and the festivities and fun things, we're so focused on the stress of it. And I have heard of different um, polls or surveys or whatever saying that this is the most stressful time of the year. But I believe it's a choice. I believe that if you want it to be stressful, you will make it stressful. But it doesn't have to be like any other time of the year. And there are certainly ways that you can make it the best possible and not be afflicted by all of the to-dos during this time of the year. So I have a sister who hates this time of the year. She has told me for years and years that it is such a struggle for her. She's always just focused on buying gifts and what she has to do for her neighbors and her husband's co-workers and all of these to-dos, all of the, the long laundry list of things to shop for and prepare and getting together with family she's not super fond of all the time yeah i should be hurt but it's okay i understand sometimes we don't even want to be with family we just want our our little uh you know household our kids our husband and wives and we don't want to have to travel or see family that uh, maybe we're not getting along with or maybe we don't see eye to eye with whatever it can be stressful so in my opinion, I completely disagree with her. I see this time of year as an awesome opportunity to give back, to focus on other people, to remember our savior and the reason we celebrate Christmas in the first place. I look at it as an opportunity to teach my kids to look outside of themselves and to be more charitable. And when I think of gift giving, I love it. I love buying gifts for people. It brings me so much joy. And my husband and I are really fun and thoughtful gift givers. It is the process that we love, not them opening the gift, which is also fun. But we love thinking about what that person would love, what that person would be changed or just so grateful for that would really mean something to them. And so it's kind of a chase, it's kind of a hunt for us to do that. And we have, have shown that love to our children and now our kids love to buy gifts for other people. And we, all throughout the year, will be somewhere and Ellie or Isla will pick up something when we're at the store and say, Uncle Eric would love this or Grandma would love this, whatever it is, because they're keeping that, you know, gift giving antenna out and paying attention to other people's needs and looking outside of themselves. And I know that it's because of other things that we're doing as well to help them to think of others, but I promise that it's, I swear that it's because of the love that Darren and I um, share regarding giving gifts to people and the process that we take to do that in, in really thinking about what that person would like and their personality and interests and hobbies and and what would help that person. So I want you guys this year to think about that. Think about the list of people that you need to give gifts to and I want you to simplify. So that might mean for you that you take people off the list if it is too overwhelming for you. But if that hurts you, if you feel like that's not the right answer for you, and in my case, I don't believe that I should take people off the list, I like to add people to the list. Um, but you can start to simplify in other ways. For instance, you don't need to be buying a $10 gift or even a $5 or a $3 gift for your neighbors or coworkers. You can make the biggest batch of chocolate chip cookies. You can go and get candy canes and print out a million labels that say, Merry Christmas, call it good. Anything that is going to help you 
to feel at peace about it and take away the the stress of it but still do the act of, of service and giving that is important to you and like I said if it's not important to you if it'd be easier just take people off your list um, yeah, it just depends on where you're at. And there's a time and a season for everything. So don't stress yourself out with, oh my gosh, I should be adding people to the list too. Or I need to um, do something for all of these people and I have to every single year and they're going to think that they're not loved if I take them off this year. You know what? Chances are, if people are taken off your list, they're not even going to realize it. Not even a big deal. I wanted to simplify for you how easy it is and how fun it can be to give gifts to other people. Because when we celebrate Christ, we are thinking of the gifts that he was given by the three wise men. And those were really expensive, really rare, awesome gifts. When we give gifts to other people, we need to have that mindset that we are giving gifts, not because we're obligated to, but because we enjoy it and we want to bless other people or we want to show our gratitude and love for them and that's why we're giving a gift. So take out the stress from it, take, take out the overwhelming feelings and give gifts because you want to, to say thank you and to show people you love them. It's about quality, loving time, charity, uh, really recognizing our savior and being grateful for the blessings that we have received because of him and because of his life and his atonement. When Ellie was four years old, we got her everything on her list, which was so stupid. My four-year-old actually said, wow, I got a lot for Christmas. Is this too much? Like she, the way that she said it and she was like questioning, was this too much? If a four-year-old is saying that, that really should speak to us, and it did. It should speak to you. We got her too much. We got her too much, it was not necessary, and it breeds and teaches a sense of entitlement and almost took away gratitude. It was kind of weird, it was way weird. Anyway, so do yourself a favor, don't do that. Put a limit on what they're going to get and they will be super grateful and excited for the things that they do get, and it will be awesome. After all of your gift giving is completed, and seriously, sum it up to two days. Go online, get her done. You don't need to draw it out, okay? And the reason why is this, I'm gonna tell you now. You're gonna take it off your list, take it out of your emotional and mental space, and you're going to focus on what you really want to focus on. Let go of the stress, let go of the, the obligations. And I want you on the Sunday before December, write down on your calendar everything that you want to do in December to serve, to uh, enjoy the season, whether it's going to live nativities, whether it's taking your kids to different Christmassy events and festivities, you're going to do the things that really magnify the meaning and the spirit of the season, not the distractions and the obligations. Then even plan out different traditions that you want to start. Um, plan out the things that uh, you want to accomplish between now and Christmas. Think about how you want to spend those two days or three days, Christmas Eve, Christmas, and the day after, and plan it out, write it out, and actually have a plan in place so that when those days come, you already have it handled. You already know what the expectation is, what you're hoping to get out of it, and make it very clear, create a clear boundary of what you're expecting to have done on that day. And of course, there's wiggle room because life happens, but you're not going to be distracted by obligations from other people that will distract you from what you want to do for your family. Now, we like to go to na live nativities. We love doing that. I love to find out all of the activities that are going on in my community and surrounding communities. We are always trying to get through my long list of Christmas movies 
And of course, we always watch like the Hallmark or uh, cheesy movies on Netflix. Yes, we love them. The cheesier, the better. The worst acting you might ever see, but we love it. And we watch them every year. So I'll include a list of our favorite Christmas movies and you guys should check them out. And some are really important to me and some I will have on a different list that is if we have time, we can go to that activity. So that we are constantly really spending time doing things that, like I said, magnify the meaning of the season and we're not buried by the stress of it and we're not distracted by those things that really aren't important and really don't teach your kids what you want them to know about this time of year, the giving season. Um, we get our kids involved in uh, charity and so we will um, get gifts off of an angel tree if there's any charities that um, any family or friends are involved in like for instance my mother-in-law is buying shoes like really good running athletic shoes for the refugees that are here in Salt Lake we try to find some sort of charitable thing that we can do each year so that we're teaching our kids really what the meaning is and and teaching them how good it feels to give to other people and when we do the angel tree we let the kids choose who we're going to be serving and so they're more involved and they're more excited about it again we're just fostering that idea of giving to other people and not receiving focus on what the meaning is to you and how you can help other people if there's service that you can do in your community like feeding the homeless uh, and you don't have to do it on Christmas morning and, and distract from your traditions, but if you can do something like that, or if you can do some sort of a service project and get other people involved, again, don't overwhelm yourself, don't stress yourself out, but if it's important to you, if you feel like that could help you enjoy the season more, think of service opportunities. Uh, I know in our community, things that I've heard of, that friends and family have done, things that we have done, making blankets for the homeless, the Christmas box, the road home. Um, I know that there's a Christmas concert jam my sister has sang in and it all the proceeds go to help people at the road home. Um, giving shirts and um, little hygiene kits to the homeless. But do things that are going to bring you joy, that are going to help you to really love this time of year. And remember what it's about and not be distracted, not hate it, and not be grateful that it's over. We should look forward to this time of year every single year. If you want to just veg out and watch Home Alone 1 and 2 and 3, is there more? There might be four. There might be four. Whatever it is that you want to do, do it so that whatever it is that's going to help you to love this season more and to really bring about the true meaning into your home and life those are the things that you should be focusing on and just veg out hot chocolate snuggle with your family have quality time together that is cool too because it's about togetherness it's about spending time with your loved ones and appreciating them and, and loving them and creating lasting memories so veg out on the couch watch your christmas movies you sip your hot cocoa have a fire and do those things that are going to make you love this season. And as we do that, it will lower everyone's stress level and everyone can enjoy it so much more. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you soon.